Hello, this is Stephen Ruckman, head football coach. I just want to take a few minutes today and actually it'll probably be a fairly lengthy discussion and give some other coaches out there a little heads up about the interview process, interview questions, and just some honest realities about trying to get a high school head football coaching job. Uh, there's probably a lot of people in my situation a few years back really wanting to become a head coach search around, hit message boards, the internet, uh, waited for local openings to open up, and try to get a head coaching job. If you want to be a head coach, nothing makes you happy until you are a head coach. Unfortunately, getting a head coaching job, it can be very, very much just a real pain, real hard type of thing to do, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Uh, a lot of fretting, heck, maybe even some tears for some people just trying to get that to that goal of being a head football coach. So I just want to tell you a little bit uh, about myself. Shoot, I applied to probably over 200 openings before I got my first head coaching job, which was whenever I was 32. Fairly young to be a head coach. Took me over 200 something applications before I landed my first head coaching job. At one point, I hit 13 states about 2,000 something miles in about four or five days hitting various interviews that I had set up. Through that swing, I didn't get any of those jobs at all. I was able to a couple weeks later on another trip, got my first head coaching job. But I hit 13 states and 2,000 something miles interviewing and so that took a lot out of me. It'll take a lot out of you. But let me move on. Say so you get your first head coaching interview. Generally, it's going to go, you're going to be in front of a panel, five to ten people. Principal will probably be there, athletic director, maybe some parents, probably the band uh, booster or the band uh, leader, some other sport coaches. You'll basically be in the hot seat. You'll sit, they'll all be out in front of you, and they're going to just pile on some questions. Well, there's a lot of things out there that you may or may not be asked. I want to take your time and I'm going to run down a few questions that you might hear and as well as some answers. Um, first one, I'm just going to go through the list here, not in any particular order. You'll need to know what's your basic offense and defense philosophy. They will ask you that. Also, how do you handle playing time? How do you handle seniors? Do you have a plan for that? Also, how will you handle things that come up from time to time like poor officiating? How will you handle that? How will you handle irate parents? Have a plan. Have an answer for all of these. What are your plans for assistant coaches? Are you going to retain existing ones? Are you going to try to hire your own? Do you know other assistants you may bring on? Have a practice plan together. What does your practice look like? Also, you may be asked to name drop a little bit. What college coaches do you know? How could you help our kids get college scholarships? That's another question that may come up. Uh, what do you do with, um, what's your experience with multi-sport athletes? How are you going to handle a kid wanting to play basketball, a kid wanting to play soccer, a kid wanting to play lacrosse, other sports you may have uh, come up from time to time. What experience do you have with that type of student athlete at the school? You know, it could be in a mountain setting or urban or out west, wherever. A lot of rich and wealthy kids, a lot of poor kids. They'll probably ask you what experience you have with those types of players you're going to be working with every day. How do you handle grades? Eligibility monitoring. Have a plan. Plans for facilities. Administrators expect you, on any level, college or high school, to have a plan for what's your vision for improving our facilities, making recommendations for budgets. That's another big one, being able to recommend things for budgets. Have a plan. They'll also want to know how you view administrators in your program. What's the role of the principal in your football program? What's the role of the AD in your program? How do you plan on increasing participation? How do you plan on recruiting your hallways? How do you plan on uh, networking with the community, with your youth coaches, with your middle school coaches? Fundraising. How are you going to bring more money into the school? How are you going to bring more money in for your players, for your coaches? How do you plan on addressing that? Role of teachers. 
How do you, how do teachers fit in your program? Behavior, what's going to happen when a teacher says a kid's got bad grades, a kid's got bad behavior? How will you address that? Your off-season program, what are you going to be doing with them? When are you going to be doing it? Lift and run and other sports, etc. Uh, winning and success, what is the role in winning and success play? How do you measure success? How do you measure winning? These are questions administrators are going to want to know and you will be asked. Building community, community service, how do you add extra value to your program? Nowadays it's hard to just say, I'm a football coach. They want to know what are other things you can bring into this school. And also, of course, I mentioned it before, boosters and parents. What role do they play? How do you plan on using them? If you're also, a lot of times as a football coach, you're going to have to take on a teaching position as well. Some just basic teaching questions you may be asked. What is your teaching philosophy? Is there any certain methodology you like to use? Do you remember something from your college days that you can bring back? What's your teaching philosophy? Also, a lot of times you'll be asked to paint a picture of your classroom. What will your classroom look like? What will a lesson look like? And another thing you may be asked in this day and age with uh, a lot of, of oversight, a lot of standardized testing, you may be asked to explain how you feel about things like differentiated learning, also how do you feel about standardized testing and mandated curriculums. I know as a head coach, those may not be things that you're interested in, but nonetheless, those are some of the teaching things that you will be asked. Now, what I want to do is move into a few answers. You don't have to use these answers, but these are some answers that I found works really well. All right, your offense and defensive strategy. You need to tailor your answer around fitting the athletes you have. Understanding the X's and O's on a board, you've never lost a game on a board. What do the X's and O's know, and how do your schemes make those X's and O's be really great? So your philosophies, you really need to hit on the point that I kind of first need to see what I have going here, and we'll tailor our strategies to make those players successful. Poor officiating, uh, I've got a good track, rac track record of not getting a lot of penalties, unsportsman likes. If that's the way you are too, make sure to bring that out. Uh, also, you know, going to we all make mistakes. You are not going to embarrass the school. That's probably the number one thing they want to hear is that in all your actions when dealing with parents, players, administrators, teachers, you're not going to embarrass the school, you're not going to embarrass the, the principal, and you will not embarrass the athletic director. The whole thing they want to know, not necessarily what your wins and records are, how many All-Americans you have, they want to know that you as a football coach, the flagship program, the flagship sport at the school, are going to make their lives easier as athletic directors and principals. And a lot of your answers you need to tailor towards that. Assistant coaches, I kind of put that back on them. Uh, my assistant coach plan needs to fit the schools as far as, are they going to let me go out and hire people? Are they going to bring, are they going to allow me to give my assistant coaches teaching positions? In this market the last few years, that's very, very hard to do. You need to have a plan tailored towards, and you need to bring that out, have a plan tailored to keeping assistance if you have to, and have a plan lined up towards bringing them in if you are allowed, which of course is, that's a big bonus. Again, have a practice plan. Big thing they want to see, you're factoring in water breaks. You're thinking about any legal issues of states you're in, like you may not be able to practice over certain temperatures. They want to make sure you're protecting the school from liability in your planning. Um, college coaches, you need to know, don't lie, don't fudge. And all these answers, be honest and be yourself. Grades. I like to answer the grades question with, Always stress what it takes for the player to become college eligible and the high school eligible stuff will take care of itself. I like to stress the fact that, well, we post charts for the ACT dates. We post charts for the eligibility guidelines. So we want to get our freshmen and sophomores thinking now about being college eligible. If they're thinking now about being college eligible, then 
they will maintain their high school eligibility throughout their four years. And that's probably a pretty decent answer. Again, uh, do whatever you like. Facilities, again, that's going to come to the school like the assistant coaches. You can have great ideas, but if they're not going to fund the facility improvements, it doesn't matter what your ideas are. So I like to answer that question with putting it back on the school. Well, I'll improve the facilities as much as you will help me budget and meet me halfway with things on. I've yet to be at a school interview at a place where there wasn't something that could be improved. Repaint something. Start a Hall of Fame. That's a big one. Start a, a wall of fame where you bring out pictures and put pictures up of past, athlete, past athletes and things like that. Get new weight equipment, new training equipment. I've seen many of sleds rusting in a field. You need to have a plan, but also you need to let them know up front, if you want me to improve the facilities, you're going to have to help me with that as well. Role of administration, follow the chain of command. You know, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm here to make your life easier. Also stress loyalty. As a head coach, we want loyalty from our assistant coaches. As a administrator of a school, as a principal or AD, they want loyalty from the head coach. So say through all, no matter what, I'm going to be your right hand man. I'm going to be loyal to you and your vision for the school. Have a couple fundraising ideas, whether it's something as simple as a car wash, to a golf scramble, to a bag and groceries night, to selling candy, have a fundraising plan. They want to know that you're going to help them also with that budget and improving facilities. Dealing with teachers, I'm going to, you need to let them know you're always going to back the teacher. I always let my players know I'm always going to back the teacher. Don't come to me with Miss Smith hates me, Mr. John is out to get me. Hey. Those are excuses. Find a way to win them over on your team. Win them over on your side. All right, and let the school know, let the teachers know, deans know, AD know. You are going to take the teacher's side at all times. The teachers are always right. I know the players are going to hate that, but that's the bottom line. That's the stance you have to take. That will really sell in an interview, and you need to follow through with that as well. Behavior, I always say, hey, Behavior is a little different everywhere you are. Big thing with behavior, have guidelines printed up and send those guidelines out. Have probably a copy of your interview. If you get asked, oh, here's my guidelines for behavior right here. They can be as simple as a rule I like using, be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, doing what you're supposed to be doing when you're there. That's pretty simple. That takes away a lot of foolishness or you can list them out. You know, no horse play. No foul language, on and on, no use of alcohol. You can have codes of conduct to sign. All of that stuff looks really good to administrators in interviews. You're off season, have a schedule. This ties into sharing multi sport athletes. I'm telling you, they want to hear you're going to share your athletes. It's probably best if you do, in my opinion. But in your off season program, you need to have a firm idea of what you want to do with those football only kids. But you need to stress, I want to get my players in other programs. Schools want to see you send people off to wrestling, send people off to basketball, track, the sports that usually tie in well to football. I'm telling you, if you tell them that they can't do those things, principals are not going to want to hear that. Athletic directors are not going to hear that. You will have a hard time getting hired if you don't embrace the multi-sport athlete in this day and age. And there's some research coming out I've heard that says doing one sport actually increases your chance of some type of injury. Winning and success. Now that may depend on where you go. There may be a place where if you don't win 10 games right away, you're fired. But most of your schools out there, 90% of them are going to want to hear you have other ideas for success other than winning. One thing I always hit on is behavior and grades. My kind of catchphrase I always lead to is I will always say, we quit playing football sometime in our lives. We always quit playing. Football, all of us that have played, is a very, very short time in our life. But we all live day to day for the rest of our lives doing something. So success for me 
is am I helping the student athlete right now in that little blip, but in that little blip of time, am I enabling them for great success when they're living day to day long after football is long gone? As far as your, then that's pretty much wraps up some of the little heads up I'll give you on the interview process with the football coaching questions. The teaching questions, those are going to be specific to you, your philosophy, your state. And above all of this, do research before you go in that interview. Research who's interviewing you. Ask them who's on my committee. Do research on those people. Find out some of the things that may sell to them. You know, and you really are selling yourself. Uh, do research on the school. Know what type of student athlete you're going to have. Know its history. Know some of its great players. Know some of its recent college scholarship award winners. If you can bring these things up in the interview, it sets you apart like you're not just some schmo looking for a job, but you've already invested yourself in the school. You've already found out a little bit and ingrained yourself with the school. So do some research. And the last thing I'll leave you with is probably the worst news though. Getting a head football coaching job, probably one of the hardest jobs in the country to get. Unfortunately, a lot of jobs before they open are already spoken for. Now, a principal won't tell you that, an AD won't tell you that, you won't find that out there. They'll take a hundred applications and they already know the one person that they will hire. One of the most frustrating, probably the only career field left where that's still the case, just because of not having much oversight and other type of things. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into an interview, uh, sat in on it, went guns blazing, and the person was picked a long time ago. And a lot of the other coaches knew it interviewing. They were just doing it for experience or taking a shot in the dark. You know, I'll research some message boards before I interview a place. A lot of times the name I saw on the message board in November it was his job. That's the person they're hiring in February after I've gone through all that process or visited 13 states. I have one where I made it to the second round, did a second trip of about 600 miles, a couple days, a uh, couple days each time that I went to stay in a hotel, got to the final two, went in, and there was a new person on the committee, and they just started hammering me. Every weakness in my resume, every weakness of everything. Just kind of shocked me a little bit. It was so crazy that on the way out, the guy that walked me out apologized a little bit, saying, you know, that guy, he's just here. He's kind of wanted to be on at the last minute. Well, you know, long story short, I didn't get the job. They hired a, a person that was already there local, but also had been coached by, in college, this new person that was on the committee. So, you know, I thought that was kind of pretty crazy. You know, I did all this, took two or three total days to make two trips of about 600 miles at a time to only have a guy's ex-head coach sit on a committee and be there just to wear me out. I mean, that kind of stunk. Hundreds of dollars, lots of time out, and it was basically the fix was in. So look, not here to complain, just here to be honest with you, it's going to be tough. If you're one of these people that are going to go out and apply to two or three jobs, five jobs, a dozen jobs, and you're ready to quit trying after that, you'll never be a head coach, period. I'm talking about I did hundreds before my first one. Maybe you'll get your first one. Maybe you'll get to coach your alma mater as soon as it opens. But for most of us out there, you're going to have hundreds of rejections before that one bit of success. The good news is once when you're a head football coach, you're almost like you're in the club. You will have a lot of opportunities to be a head football coach from then on. So hurry up and get out there. Be prepared for lots of rejection. Study these questions that I gave you. Come up with your own answers if you have a better one. Use some of mine if that kind of speaks to your heart above all else. Research before you go in and be totally honest and be yourself. Again, Coach Ruckman, if I can ever help you, please contact me. Thanks for your time.